Hello everyone, it's Iftekharuddin, you can call me Ifti from Extreme Returns. So I'm on eToro, I've set up uh, my account, I'm part of the Popular Investor Program, which means other people can copy me. I've already got nine copiers, 89 followers. Um, my stats have gone down recently because we had a bad day in the market, but not bad, 11% in just under two months. Part of my portfolio includes um, several big companies, some of them I'm sure you've heard of, others not so much. So what I'm going to do is analyze one of them. It's Illumina. And I'm going to go through the history of that. I've got a decent percentage, just under 4% holding in that. Um, so Illumina, based in America. In fact, let's see where they are based exactly. San Diego, lovely part of the world, really beautiful on the Mexican border. Um, if you do get a chance, do go. Let's talk a bit more about the company itself. It, <laughs> now, this is going to get a bit technical, but I'll break it down for you. Lumina is a provider of sequencing and array-based solutions for genetic analysis. The company operates through two segments, core and consolidated variable interest entities. Now, what on earth does that mean? What they do is they've got testing kits for um, gene editing uh, healthcare um, processes. So uh, most of their revenues is very, very stable and the cost of the testing is going down. They're doing an awful lot of research. In fact, they've got some very innovative um, methods of um, R&D. Uh, what they do, for example, is they set up, um, in effect, venture capital funds. They call them incubators. And they give seed capital to lots of different entrepreneurs who are in the same biotech field as them. And they grow that company, help them through all sorts of, uh, not just funding, but in all sorts of other areas as well. And then they collaborate with them in order to grow both companies. Um, so obviously they're in the healthcare medical kind of field. Let's look at uh, the quality of the company. So quality indicators for financial metrics are several, but Stockopedia have kindly broken it down to the three main ones, return on capital employed, return on equity, and operating margin. Let's go through each one. Return on capital employed is simply um, how well a company is investing its money our money, if you like, in order to create more money. And the higher the percentage, the better. So 11.4% for a biotech company is very good. And for the market generally, it's not bad. We've seen better, the US tech companies, for example, Microsoft, have got better uh, capital and return on capital employed. Others like Amazon have got lower. Um, return on equity is simply how they're using shareholders' funds. An operating margin is simply how much, what's the percentage of profit they're making for, in, in direct terms. So not all costs, for example, tax depreciation, you know, tax and um, uh, intangibles, for example, things which are what we call below the bottom line. So operating profit, that's how you, uh, you take total revenue and operating profit, one divided by the other is the operating margin. Um, and that includes salaries, rent, those costs associated with producing the goods or the services which the company produces. So looking at the revenue, um, $1.8 billion back in 2014, growing to 2.2, 2.4, 2.7, 3.3, 3.5. .3, and the last 12 months going down to 3.2 and the estimate for the full year of 2020 will be significantly below uh, the last year's figures. And the reason for that obviously will be um, the healthcare industry this year obviously has had priorities elsewhere. Uh, next year, they're looking to grow back to just under 4 billion. So well above their 2019 levels. So if you look at uh, CAGR, which means compound annual growth rate, it's just under 14% for a healthcare company of this magnitude, that is very good. And what you see here, um, 
operating profits. Let's go down to net profit because that's the figure that I like most of all. <laughs> what, how much money they're making after everything. <laughs> so if you go back in 2014, now one interesting thing is Illumina obviously have been very profitable for many years. That's not the case for all biotech companies or even all medical companies. So it's an established company in the S&P 500 and it's um, really uh, profitable, which is good. So if you look at 353, went up to 462, stayed at the same level in the next year, went up significantly in 2017, jumped again in 2018. So it's been going up and up. This year, you'd expect it to go down and it'll get back to good levels next year. Um, now, interesting thing. If you see uh, net profit here, it's 23.2% compound annual growth rate. Total revenue is less, which means the more revenue they're bringing in, they're getting even more in terms of the rate of return on profit. What you often see is companies growing, but it's not being translated to the net profit level, which means they're just getting market share. So they're spending an awful lot of money acquiring new customers, but it takes time for that to be translated into profit. And when it does come in the early days, it's less than the previous rate because you're spending so much time and money bringing in new revenue. In this case, however, more revenue they're bringing in, even more is their net profit, which is really good. Um, and you can see operating margin, although it says 22% here, which is that number there, uh, it has been higher. And if you look under normal circumstances without COVID, you're looking at closer to 30%. Very, very good. And uh, return on capital employed has been consistent 2020, 16, 13, 17. It has been dipping. Now, this is something that would worry me because I'd like to see return on capital employed increasing not decreasing. And I know you can't really take this last 12 months, but even if you take the last two or three years, it's significantly less than it was in the past. I'd like to know why that is. Now, quality 89, value 13. So what does that mean? How is this company valued? It's expensive. Anything in red on Stock Stockopedia means expensive, means bad. So how do we know this? PE ratio, the most commonly used ratio to value companies it's 50 just under 56 uh, the higher this is the more expensive it is we saw amazon at 71 you saw microsoft at i think it was in the 20s um, but 56 is expensive i wouldn't enter at this rate at the moment i would wait unless you did a very small holding now one thing i don't like is the fact they're not giving any dividends uh, now let's look here. They are sitting on cash pile of 3.3 billion. Um, it looks like that cash pile, although it increased significantly in in the earlier years from 2014, 15, 16, it's 1.5 billion, went up to two here. These two years, it really increased. So they're sitting on a on a very good cash pile, and they're adding to it through their profits. Uh, which next year will be nearly a billion a year. I'd like to see this company giving dividends. They can certainly afford to give back some of that one billion and not to keep on just adding to the cash pile, unless uh, the management can convince me they've got plans for that three billion uh, in terms of an acquisition, which is uh, game changing or in terms of some other um, research and development products which are coming through. But I'd like to see them giving a dividend. Now, one of the most important um, ratios there are is cash flow. And what you want to see, um, let's have a look at the cash flow statement. No, it's not here. Um, what I'm looking for is how much of their revenues is being translated into cash. But um, another indicator which is very good is free cash flow per share. Now, what does that mean? This is a, a, a ratio which people often overlook and I think at their peril. I think one of the most important um, 
ways of looking at the health of a company is to see how, how they're producing cash flow, how fast, how much per share. Here you can see 2.41 in 2014 nearly doubled the next year, which is a fantastic achievement. Now that could be because they're buying back shares. It could be for other reasons. I, I, that's, a good in, uh, that's a good starting point to ask that question. It went down to 3.4, went up again to 3.8. Now it jumped to 5.6 in 2018, and it's been, jump, you know, it's been steadily increasing even this year, which has been terrible for them because you can see they, they've taken a $400 million hit on their profits compared to last year. Uh, although their revenues haven't gone down by as much in percentage terms. I mean, it's nearly 40% here profit hit, but the percentage decrease from 2019 to the 12 month uh, figures that we have is about 10%. So 6.3 pence per share in terms of free cash flow is really, really good. This company is a cash cow. And I think if they can carry that on, I mean, look at that 18.6% compound annual growth rate in terms of cash flow per share. That is a really, really good indicator. So let's look at uh, momentum. Now, momentum is just how fast it's been growing. Let's look at, you can see the one month and three month basis, it's outperforming the market significantly. Although when you look at the six months and one year, it's underperforming the market. Let's see what it was pre-pandemic. So if we look in the end of February, uh, the share price was 270-ish. It's gone up to 362, went down all the way down to 225, went up all the way to 400, went down again to 268, and it's recovered to 362 now. That's a bit more volatile than I'd like, especially here. I don't like to see that. Uh, so when those days come, either I would top it up in terms of my holding, or I would just stick it out. Let's look at the last five years. And again, yeah, you can see this is a pattern in this company. You get to know companies like you do with people. And the personality of this company is unfortunately a little bit volatile because you can see all these dips. But having said that, an upward trajectory, if you look at it all time, for years and years, it didn't really do anything. If you look here from 2001, all the way down to it's not really till you get to here, 2013. So for 10, 12 years, it's not really doing much. So kudos to all those people that were holding it for that long. And there's a lot of dips along the way, but I would buy on those dips. Now, one interesting thing I did want to show everybody is their shareholders. So the reason I bought this company is because uh, the, its biggest shareholder is someone called Bailey Gifford. They're a Scottish investment company and I follow them very closely. Now, uh, there's a chap there called James Anderson. He's a top fund manager and he's been holding this position in, in Bailey Gifford and Scottish uh, Mortgage Investment Trust, which is their other uh, company uh, for a long time. He's a big Tesla bull and he they've invested in lots of excellent companies. So this is what brought me to Illumina. Um, also, there is another company that I follow that I've got it that are not in there, not listed here, but it's um, ARK Invest. And I know Kathy Wood has, of ARK Invest has recently sold out Lumina. I wouldn't, uh, but she was holding it for a long time. So this is all about Lumina and um, the health. I mean, I can go into a lot more detail. I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to try and keep these videos a little bit shorter for everybody. Um, but my name is Iftikharuddin. You can call me Ifti from Extreme Returns. Uh, I would be grateful if you could subscribe to this YouTube video channel. Um, it helps, like it. Uh, and more importantly, if you can go across to eToro and follow me, copy me on Extreme Returns, start with a small amount of money and grow it because uh, I intend to be one of the top traders on eToro and it'll be wonderful to have people at the beginning of the journey so that you guys can share in the profits I'm going to make and I'm going to make a lot of money for you. See you guys very, very soon.
Take care.